Franklin Reese, a seasoned farmer and respected cattle breeder, had just set foot on his vast rural property when a chorus of alarmed shouts greeted him, shattering the usual tranquility of the countryside. In the midst of the commotion emerged the familiar figure of Otis, a robust cattleman with sharp eyes, running towards him brandishing a rake like a sword. With a grunt, Otis tossed the tool aside, panting heavily as he reached Franklin. Franklin, where did this infernal beast come from? Otis questioned, his rough voice reflecting his agitation. He won't let anyone near. Not even you will be able to contain him. Otis. Is this the first time you've seen a breeding bull? Franklin asked, raising an eyebrow in a mix of amusement and concern. I swear on everything sacred, Franklin, go see for yourself. It's not a bull, it's a monster. A creature ready to impale your belly with those horns. Otis seemed genuinely frightened. No, I won't deal with him. I still value my life. This is the second barn he's destroyed, for God's sake. Ramon tried to feed him some hay. But the animal shook his horns so forcefully that poor guy got thrown to the side, hit his head. I sent him home, he might need medical care. Upon hearing Otis' words, a displeased expression settled on Franklin's weathered face. He made his way to the barn where a young breeding bull, with shiny skin and a round head, had been delivered days earlier. Franklin had accepted the high cost of acquiring it, especially because he didn't have an ordinary bull in his herd. The animal was praised as a good breeder, but if things continued as Otis described, Franklin would have to send him to the slaughterhouse. It was regrettable to waste so much money, but if no one could handle the beast, he had no other choice. As he entered the barn, the sight of the bull made Franklin stop in his tracks, his eyes widening at the creature before him. The animal's nostrils flared upon sensing the farmer's presence, leaving Franklin frozen with fear in the face of the massive beast. Well, what exactly do you think you're doing here? Franklin questioned the colossal creature in front of him, his voice trembling with apprehension. You're terrorizing my entire team, you know, he continued crossing his arms in a stance of frustrated authority. Someone needs to feed you, provide water, keep you clean. That's basic, animal. The bull responded with a defiant look, its fiery red eyes gleaming in the dimness of the barn, fury and resistance shining within them. Emitting a roar that reverberated through the stable walls, the animal swung its head with such force that it nearly broke the thick chains restraining it. Faced with this display of brute strength, Franklin involuntarily took a step back, retreating until he finally turned his back and ran to the safety outside the barn. I'm at a loss, Otis, Franklin admitted, dejected, as he approached the cattleman who was sitting on a stack of firewood. I spent a fortune on that monster, and now it seems like I've thrown my money away. How am I going to integrate him into the herd? He could cause a disaster. That's what I was trying to tell you, Franklin. Otis agreed, shaking his head in a, I told you so, gesture. Well, let's give him a few more days, Franklin decided, sighing deeply. Maybe he'll get used to the environment and to us. If that doesn't happen, we'll have to send him to the slaughterhouse. Now, I need to go check on Ramon, see if the accident was serious. With worry weighing on his shoulders like an anvil, Franklin rushed to his vehicle. In less than a minute, he was behind the wheel, the engine roaring in tune with the urgency he felt. He drove with determined focus, leaving the farm's dust behind and heading towards the humble village where Ramon's family lived. Upon arrival, he was greeted by a storm of screams and reprimands from Ramon's wife. What the hell is going on here, Franklin? The woman was in a true fury. And what if I had lost my husband? Who would help me raise my children then? Franklin's eyes immediately searched for Ramon, finding him lying motionless on the couch. What happened to him, he asked urgently. Did you call an ambulance? He didn't call anything, the woman replied, arms crossed in indignation. He was terrified, 
said your bull almost crushed him. Poor man, he's still trembling in fear. A sigh of relief escaped Franklin, though his expression remained concerned. Oh, thank God. For a moment there, I thought. Here. Franklin pulled out some money from his pocket and handed it to Ramon's wife. She accepted the money, skillfully hiding it in the pocket of her apron with a grateful look. Please take care of Ramon and don't let him go to work tomorrow, Franklin requested, worried. Of course, of course, the woman responded, her eyes gleaming with contentment at the unexpected money. He'll stay home, Franklin, don't worry. I'll wake him up early tomorrow and give him a good rest. Just let him rest. With a relieved and hopeful smile, Franklin left Ramon's house, allowing himself a deep breath of fresh country air. The sensation was a constant reminder of how far he had come, of the life he had chosen. Just seven years before, he was an urban dweller, a city slicker caught up in the frantic rhythm of a pulsating metropolis. There came a day, however, when the hurried and chaotic routine of the city began to feel oppressive to Franklin. With that, he decided to make a radical change in his life, or return to his rural roots. His destination was the property where his wife Samantha's parents had lived and worked. The once thriving farm, however, had been left to drift with time and the advancing age of the former owners, becoming practically a vestige of what it had once been. At first, Samantha didn't share Franklin's enthusiasm for the change. She had grown accustomed to urban comfort, the convenience of city services, and the familiarity of urban spaces. However, after nearly six months of discussions and contemplation, and with Franklin's love and persistence, she agreed to change their lives. They sold their two apartments in the city and invested everything in restoring and developing the inherited farm. During this transition, their son Philip, who was eleven at the time, had to adapt to a new reality. The countryside initially seemed like a strange world to him, far from his friends and the life he knew in the city. However, over time, Philip found freedom and a connection with nature in the rural lifestyle that he could never have in the city. He ended up falling in love with the land he now called home. Today, seven years later, the family has completely transformed the farm. What was once a dilapidated property has become a thriving and vibrant farm. Samantha, Franklin, and Philip not only revived the land but also built a home they love and a life that fills them with pride. The tranquility of the countryside, the closeness to nature, and the work on the farm have provided them with a quality of life they wouldn't trade for anything. They are living proof that happiness can be found in unexpected places if you're willing to take the leap. Philip, the young heir to Samantha and Franklin's rural legacy, embraced the country life with vibrant passion. He found charm in every aspect of rural life, the fresh and clean air, the vastness of open spaces, the serenity of the nearby river, the simplicity of the local people. And when his father gifted him a German shepherd, whom he affectionately named Diesel, the boy's joy knew no bounds. From that first day, Diesel became Philip's inseparable companion, following him on every adventure. Over time, Philip grew into a young man. He began sharing his father's responsibilities, working tirelessly without any desire for an alternative fate. His dreams were simple and humble, to find a partner who shared his love for a simple life, for the peace and happiness of moments shared with family and friends. One afternoon, sitting beside Franklin, Philip shared his thoughts. Where can you find someone like that these days? Dad, he questioned, to which Franklin, with a doubtful expression, responded. Today, it seems like all girls dream of a different life, Philip. They like luxuries, relaxing in spas, vacations at resorts, a life of leisure and rest. Philip nodded determinedly. No, Dad. I don't want a girl like that. I dream of finding someone like Mom, beautiful, kind, and loyal, someone who would follow me wherever I go, just like mom followed you here. Is it bad here? 
I love our outdoor dinners, the tranquility, it's wonderful. Franklin smiled, touched by his son's passion. Philip, maybe you should consider city life. Build a good career, settle there. Philip interrupted him with a confident smile. No, dad. That's not for me. I'm going to live off farming, I'm good at it. At that moment, Samantha joined the conversation. With the caring gaze of a concerned mother, she said, Son, we worry about you. Your father, me, and even your dog Diesel. Why don't you at least try experiencing city life? Philip looked at his mother with unwavering conviction. Why try, mom? I'm already convinced. No, I won't make money to travel Europe from farming, but I don't need that. I'm happy here. Philip, with a gentle and understanding smile, approached and hugged his mother, comforting her. Let him be, Samantha, Franklin said, shaking his head in resignation. He knew his son's stubborn spirit. You know how our son is. When he decides something, there's no force on earth that can change his mind. Samantha sighed deeply, a shadow of sadness crossing her face as she looked at her husband. Why does he have to be so stubborn, Franklin, she asked, her voice filled with concern. It's unbelievable, he is just like you, not only physically but in personality as well. It's like looking in a mirror. Yes, and I'm very proud of that, Franklin replied, a proud smile spreading across his face. He lightly tapped Philip's shoulder, a gesture of paternal approval. However, Philip's stubbornness would soon prove to be a challenge even for his father's patience. One day, on the brink of a true family storm, Philip came home with a declaration that left his parents in shock, he wanted to get married. What nonsense is this, exclaimed Samantha, gesturing exasperatedly. Dear, just listen to what our son is saying. Philip, is this some kind of joke? Franklin furrowed his brow, displaying his disbelief. Dad, I'm not joking, asserted Philip, maintaining a serious gaze that made it clear to his parents that, unbelievable as it may seem, he was completely sincere. Franklin cast an ironic look at his son. And who is this lucky girl who has captured my son's heart? As far as I know, you've never dated anyone, spend all your nights at home. Did you find a virtual love? No, Dad, I met her at the junkyard, said Philip, dead serious. Remember when you asked me to throw away the trash three days ago? That's where I found her. Her name is Julia. Samantha seemed lost, her wide-eyed expression conveying pure perplexity. Son, sweetheart, I really don't understand, she confessed. Are you serious about marrying a girl you found at the junkyard? What was Julia doing there? Mom, you won't believe it, Philip began, a mixed expression of excitement and admiration on his face. She's been living there for two weeks, in an old wooden cart someone discarded. How old is she? Franklin asked, struggling to absorb the unusual story his son was telling them. She's the same age as me. In fact, I'm just a few hours older than her. Amazing, right? We found out we were born on the same day. That's not what surprises me, retorted Samantha, her voice revealing a hint of irritation. I'm astounded by the irresponsibility of the decision you've made. Do you really want to bring a beggar into our home, Philip? Wake up. She must have a family somewhere. If she doesn't want to live with them, and maybe they don't want to live with her, there must be a good reason for it. Have you found out why she's living on the streets? Yes, Mom, I have, Philip replied, his tone filled with compassion. Julia was very young when her father died. Her mother remarried and lived with her new husband for almost seven years. He was a cruel man, treating Julia and her mother terribly. They were almost slaves to him. Julia was only 14 when her mother passed away. From then on, Julia lived with her stepfather and his new wife, 
who moved into the house almost immediately. In fact, they kicked Julia out of the house. She found refuge in a warm barn where the stepfather granted her a small room. Julia took care of the animals, worked in the garden, and generally did all the heavy chores in the house. In return, they fed her and sometimes gave her a few clothes. But most of the time, she wore only what the neighbors donated to her, usually used clothes from their children. Look, none of this can be true, Franklin dismissed with a wave of his hand. We're in the 21st century, slavery was abolished long ago. If this Julia of yours accepted that kind of treatment and didn't react, then she's just naive. And there's no point in discussing it further. Marriage is out of the question. Dad, I'm not throwing a lavish party. Julia and I just want to get married, and she will come live here. No, she won't. At least not as your wife. If you insist, we'll allow her to stay with us, but only as a tenant. Let's observe her for at least two years. If by then you haven't changed your mind, then we'll agree to the marriage. Dad, I don't need your approval, Philip retorted with a determined look. I've already made my decision, and I will do it my way. This house doesn't belong only to you but to me as well, and Julia will be my wife here. No. She won't. Franklin slammed the table hard, causing the utensils to jump. As long as I'm the head of this house, things will be done my way. Philip silently stood up, walked over to his father, and stared at him. The atmosphere became tense, as if the air had condensed. Samantha choked, feeling the imminent confrontation. In front of her were no longer husband and son, but two adult men on the brink of conflict. Stop, now, she ordered, placing herself between the two. Philip. Franklin. Let's talk calmly. I've said everything I had to say, growled Franklin, his teeth clenched. And so have I. Philip echoed in the same tone. And if you don't like my choice, then accept it. Otherwise, instead of gaining a daughter-in-law, you'll lose a son. The room was so charged with tension that it seemed about to burst, a volcano on the verge of eruption. None of the three had noticed the slender figure that appeared at the door, only when a fragile and timid voice filled the air did they turn, surprised by the newcomer's presence. Philip, don't be disrespectful to your parents like this, pleaded the girl, her words echoing in the suffocating silence. They still don't know me, and their fears are justified. I appreciate that they have been kind to me, but we can't see each other anymore. Mom, Dad, this is Julia I was talking about, said Philip, indicating the young woman who, against the light from the open door, seemed almost ethereal. His parents stood there, looking at Julia, unable to form words. Then, Philip took a step forward, crossed the space that separated them, and gently took Julia's hand. Come, my love, he said, a calming firmness in his voice. If we're not welcome here, let's find a place where we will be. He began to move towards the exit, but Samantha, in an act of desperation, ran after him. Son, no, don't say that, I don't want you to go, she pleaded, turning to Franklin, her eyes imploring. Franklin, what are you? Let him do as he wishes, she spoke, her voice muffled by the weight of the situation. Franklin gave a resigned wave of his hand. It's his life, after all. He said, as he watched his only son disappear through the door. In no time, Philip and Julia became husband and wife. There was no grand celebration, no extravagant party or sumptuous feast. Samantha simply set the table in the dining room, and they celebrated this sacred moment in intimate family unity. A few weeks after the wedding, Philip received a scholarship to study agronomy in a one-year intensive program. With a heart torn between the joy of the opportunity and the sadness of separation, he flew far away, leaving Julia under the roof of Franklin and Samantha. Samantha made an effort to accept the presence of her new daughter-in-law, 
which, to her surprise, wasn't as difficult as she had anticipated. Julia, with her serene and hard-working nature, was always willing to take on any task. Except, as she confessed with a shy smile, in the kitchen. They never let me into the kitchen, explained Julia to Samantha, a touch of sadness in her eyes. I did most of the heavy work at home, and when my mother was still alive, I was too young to handle the stove. Samantha responded with a warm smile. No problem. I can teach you, if you'd like. Julia's face lit up with a smile. I would really like that, she said, her voice radiant with joy. In moments of privacy with her husband, Samantha opened her heart, sharing her observations, her admiration for Julia shining through in her words. You know, Franklin, she began, a kind smile lighting up her face, I really like this girl. She is so kind and attentive. I don't even need to ask, she anticipates every need. Before I can even think of sweeping the floor or washing the dishes, she's already in action. Franklin nodded, his eyes narrowing as he reflected. Yes, I've noticed that, he said, a note of surprise in his voice. Another thing that surprised me, Samantha continued, was how Diesel accepted her. You know how reserved he is, only opening up to Philip. But with Julia, it's like he knows she's part of the family. And you know what else I found out? Samantha leaned in to whisper something in Franklin's ear, her eyes sparkling with amusement. The other day, I saw her eating a pickle and asked if she was pregnant. She just smiled and told me something unbelievable, she and Philip have never consummated their marriage. Can you believe that? They haven't slept together yet. But why? Franklin furrowed his brow, his gaze puzzled. After all, they are married, even if everything happened very quickly. And that's exactly what I asked her, Samantha continued, she told me that they still know each other very little and she didn't feel ready to take that step. But that it's okay to marry someone you barely know and still maintain physical distance, that confused me. Franklin raised an eyebrow, still puzzled by the revelations. So, what exactly are they doing? Julia explained to me, Samantha said with a pensive expression, that Philip had compassion for her situation. He wanted to make sure she was safe, protected, until he returns. Can you understand what he did? I believe I understand now, Franklin murmured, a newfound respect for his son reflected in his eyes. Franklin nodded, gradually tempering his attitude towards Julia. However, the saga of the new bull reignited the cauldron of tension. Returning from the farm, Franklin shared his bad news with his wife and daughter-in-law. You won't believe it, he began, a touch of frustration in his voice, I managed to get a bull from a very meddlesome seller. The beast is a beauty, with chocolate brown fur and a white head, almost as if they forgot to paint it. But despite its beauty, the bull is almost wild. They gave it a strange name too, Bill, but the damn thing doesn't even respond to it. I gave the rancher a few days to try to calm him down. If it doesn't work, I'll have to send him to the slaughterhouse. Julia, who was listening attentively, remained silent. It was only upon hearing the word slaughterhouse that her eyes widened. Neither Franklin nor Samantha noticed this sudden reaction, absorbed in Franklin's story. However, later that night, Franklin was awakened by the gentle sound of the front door closing. With Samantha sleeping beside him, he deduced that it could only be Julia. Very cunning, he thought, quickly getting dressed, determined to find out where his daughter-in-law was headed in the darkness of the night. Did Julia have a secret affair? Was she deceiving Philip and leading a double life, being the exemplary daughter by day and a stranger by night? Franklin could hardly believe what he saw when he realized that Julia was heading towards the farm. Could she be involved with that rancher in taking advantage of the night to meet him? How infuriating! Franklin muttered to himself, his voice trembling with indignation. 
I will unravel this mystery and catch that shameless man in the act. Franklin moved cautiously, his steps quickening as he realized Julia had disappeared into the darkness of the barn, where that monstrous bull that intimidated everyone was housed. With anger bubbling inside him, Franklin opened the barn door, the metal squeaking softly. What he saw next made his jaw drop. There was Julia, illuminated by the soft moonlight seeping through the cracks in the roof. She cradled the massive head of the bull against her chest, stroking its thick fur with a tenderness Franklin never expected to see there. Bill, Bill, my dear, my dear, Julia whispered softly, feeding the beast with a piece of bread. The bull, with unexpected calmness, chewed the pieces from Julia's hand, snorting in a gesture that Franklin interpreted as pure satisfaction. What? What is happening here? Franklin questioned, approaching, bewildered, as he found his daughter-in-law in such a surreal situation with the animal. Franklin, dear, this is my bill, Julia began, her voice gentle and full of affection. That's what I used to call him. You bought him from my stepfather, Luis Lemos, didn't you? Yes, I bought him from him. Franklin confirmed, but I had no idea he was your stepfather. Julia nodded, a sad but determined look in her eyes. When our mayor brought Bill, he was completely debilitated. My stepfather wanted me to get rid of him, to kill him to feed the dogs. But I refused. I pleaded to keep the calf. And, for some reason unknown to me, my stepfather allowed it. I fed Bill with a bottle, took care of him day and night. And look how he has grown, how beautiful he has become. But when I was kicked out of the house, I had to leave him behind. There was no way to take him with me. Bill became stubborn, wouldn't listen to anyone, so I understood why my stepfather decided to sell him. I heard his story today and knew it was about my bull. So I came here to make sure. Suddenly, Julia turned and knelt before Franklin, her eyes pleading. Please, don't send him to the slaughterhouse. He's gentle, he's good, and I will take care of him myself. This is all I needed. Franklin grumbled, helping Julia to her feet. Don't worry. I'll keep your peculiar pet. But you'll have to teach my ranchers how to take care of him. I can't allow you to be alone with him. It will be enough if you just come to visit him. The bull, the object of all that dispute, let out a heavy sigh through its wide nostrils, rubbing against Julia as if it were a giant cat seeking affection. Julia, you truly are a box of surprises, Franklin murmured, shaking his head in admiration. May I give him a pat, he asked, pointing to the immense bull next to Julia. Of course. Julia replied with a crystalline laugh, you'll see how affectionate he is. Well, I certainly hope so, Franklin returned the smile, a bit more confident. The year of training passed in the blink of an eye, and soon Philip returned home, where his beloved family awaited him eagerly. After the initial wave of excitement and celebration, Franklin pulled his son aside and embraced him tightly. Thank you, son, he said, his voice choked with emotion, for bringing someone like Julia into our family. She truly is worth her weight in gold. With her, you'll be as happy as I was with your mother. Remember when I told you the story of the bull? Well, this bill is worth gold too. He's an exceptional animal, the calves the cows have been birthing are strong and impressive. I hope you and Julia give me grandchildren as robust, healthy, and full of life as Bill is. No doubt about it, Dad, Philip assured, giving a friendly pat on his father's shoulder. I won't disappoint you. Philip kept his word, and a year later, the whole family gathered at the maternity ward to fetch Julia and the robust twin she had given her husband. The pride and happiness Philip felt when he realized his parents shared in his joy were indescribable. Now, they were all certain that their dream of having a large and united family had become a reality. We hope you enjoyed this story. 
Now, get ready for the next exciting narrative on our channel.